This is Taya Graham reporting for the Real News Network in Baltimore City, Maryland. Since the election of Donald Trump, there have been concerns that efforts to reform policing in cities across the country would face a hostile Justice Department. Nowhere are those worries more evident than in Baltimore City. After the Justice Department issued a damning report on the police department here, the city entered a consent decree with the DOJ to push reform efforts forward. But today in federal court, that agreement came under the scrutiny of federal judge James K. Bredar. And the question that looms over these proceedings is how will what's going on in Washington impact the reform efforts here. Listening to the judge, he referenced changes in the political winds, how they might affect the consent decree. Mm -hmm. What do you think he was alluding to? Well, it's interesting. There was a sense of urgency in the proceedings. The judge really wanted to get a lot of things hammered out in, ter in terms of specifics and metrics, because as he said, you know, things are changing. He said there's political change, uh, you know, in the air, and that he knew that the court was not immune to it, which I think was very interesting to bring up, because, you know, there's been a great question about what's going to happen with police reform under the Trump administration. And of course, the lawyers sitting at the de at the table today for the DOJ might not be there when Jeff Sessions is appointed. And the judge was basically saying, look, I need to get this hammered out. I need to get the details down. I need to know what the court's responsibilities are now. So I think what he was saying, so I can sign this, because I don't know what's going to happen when Jeff Sessions take over. As, as we know, and as we've reported before, Jeff Sessions is not someone who has been favorable to consent yeah, decrees, absolutely. as you pointed out many right. times. It was that a he has 2008 written, Alabama mm -hmm. Policy Institute paper where he mm -hmm. cited specifically that he thought consent decrees right. were overreach. And you know, he's been hostile to civil rights uh, and openly hostile to civil rights. So there's a great deal of concern today that was aired inside the court about what the Justice Department will do and what the judge could get done in the meantime to sort of nail this down. Right, and I noticed specifically that the judge says that as a judge, he's not subject to the whims of the change right. that occur every four years, that he is beyond that. However, yeah. he did demonstrate con some concern when he said, I do read the newspapers, political right. winds are changing. Well, he says specifically, you know, the courts respond to the law, so Congress can change the law, but I have to respond to the law and I, I have to make sure that what I'm doing within the guidelines of this consent decree are within the realm, within aspects of the law. So I can't go outside it. I can't become a political instrument. I have to, I have to buy by the law. And so, you know, I think one of the things that came up today very quickly is that there is questions about what could happen when the Trump administration takes over, when Jeff Sessions takes over. I think, see this as a very pragmatic judge. I don't see this as a far reaching judge. And if indeed they filed a motion, the Justice Department saying, you know, we believe this should be changed. I don't think he'll ignore it. The mayor was here and she appeared in court today. Mm -hmm. What does she have to say? Well, the mayor was there specifically to address what was a big concern throughout the entire hearing, which was the fiscal concerns. The judge was very concerned about if the city had committed to money, how much it was going to cost and if the city had the money to follow through on it. So he wanted the mayor to speak to that. And he asked the mayor specifically about that. We caught up with the mayor shortly after she made the appearance and here's what she had to say about that. No, what I said to no, the judge asked if I would appear and I appeared because the judge had questions as it relates to the financial financial aspect of this agreement and so that we put in here and what I explained to the judge is I think that our um that David Ralph, our city solicitor, explained is that in all of this we have in the agreement financial responsibility and we will be financially responsible. But what the judge said is if he were to issue an order that said that we needed to get the Cadillac as opposed to the Chevy, would we comply? And the answer would be yes. Do you, have an, uh, do you have an estimate of cost, a better estimate of cost? Well, I, I know that, um, and I can get those figures for you, that we have put some money in the budget for this. Uh, we are getting assistance from other areas. For example, we do have a grant that's coming in from the Ford Foundation. And so I know other monies will be available. I've even asked for money in the state budget for some of the capital uh, projects uh, costs uh, for this particular um, issue. So I'm, I'm really confident that we'll be able to get this done. I want this consent decree signed so we can move forward. You know, I've There was a lot of discussion on what police officers could do or not mm -hmm. do in low-income neighborhoods. What direction do you think the judge was going? Well, what was really interesting is there's a lot of things in the consent decree about officers' discretion out on the streets. Of course, trying to address the fact that the Justice Department report specifically cited that the police department targeted African-American neighbors, primarily African-American neighbors, with unconstitutional stops and seizures. There are a lot of outlines in this consent decree saying, you know, if an officer wants to make a loitering arrest, they have to um, call a supervisor. An officer can't just stop someone because he's in a high crime neighborhood. An officer can't just stop someone because the person looks at him. Interesting echoes of Freddie Gray. And in fact, the judge cited that. And the judge said, how does this um, 
jibe with ca current case law because current case law gives officers a lot of discretion. Uh, Wardley versus Illinois, which you've talked about many times, says that if an officer is in a high crime neighborhood, they can, and the person please. And and what the police, what the police department said, uh, and the city, and the justice department said, these outlines just make it very specific and make sure that you can't do one or the other. In other words, like just because someone looks at you, you can't stop them. Right. Just because you're in a high crime neighborhood, you can't stop them. If right. both happen to be there, you know the person, you can. So they, there was a big, big discussion about whether or not this consent decree went beyond the Constitution or, right, the, or, or whether what, or not it was trying to change the legal precedence, actually. Yeah, yeah, the case law, basically, it was, it was you know, because according to the judge, the case law gives officers a lot of discretion. They talked about the Wren decision, which means, you know, if you stop someone for a taillight, it has to be for a taillight, not because you think they have drugs. And again, you know, the judge was saying, well, you're kind of saying they can't do that anymore. One uh, big concern for the judge was money. What kind of commitment did the city of Baltimore make today? Well, that is another interesting thing. As we talked about with the mayor, the mayor was asked about money, and the judge was saying specifically, Specifically, now, you know, there's no price attached to all this stuff. Do you know what the price is? Again, city solicitor, uh, Mr. Ralph, uh, referred to uh, the, the, that they'd made some estimates but did not speak specifically in court. And I think the judge was saying, well, what happens if, if you're saying, I can't comply with this because I can't afford it? The Justice Department says you're not doing X, Y, and Z. You need to spend more money. What I can't action afford. am I supposed to take as a judge? Do I have your commitment right now that you're going to do what it takes? And the, interestingly, the mayor actually said, well, you know, we, we don't, if we can't get it from here, we'll get it somewhere else. She was referring mostly to a grant that has already been forthcoming from the Ford Foundation, giving the city a million dollars to implement this. She's also gone to Governor Larry Hogan and asked him for money. So uh, the judge was very, very concerned that the city wouldn't have the money. Now, there is one thing in this uh, de degree that the budget for the monitor, which is the person who will be selected by both parties to monitor the city's progress, will be um, will cost about $1.4 million. But, you know, as you saw, the judge also talking about specifics about reporting, the city is going to have to report on almost every arrest they make and every stop they make in a poor African-American neighborhood. And there were concerns that the city wouldn't have the money to do that. And if they didn't do it, what was the judge supposed to do with this? And the mayor basically made the promise that we'll do whatever we have to do to pay for this. What did the judge have to say about public input? Well, public input uh, is going to be a part of this. And it's really interesting because it's not just about people coming, as he said, remember, you made a comment about this, about it's not going to be open mic night. Exactly. But he will have public input in written form and then testimony. And then he said, well, look, I said, I can't just take this public input as like people just expressing their opinion. This has to be considered as actual evidence that right. could influence how I how I how I sign this consent right, decree or how really I alter it. Because initially those lawyers were saying, well, this is context for you. And he said yeah. it's either evidence, it's either factual, it's either yeah. admitted, or it's not. In other words, he doesn't want this to be an exercise in just public self-expression. He wants he wants to use whatever the public says and he says, I can take what the public says and apply it to how I eventually sign this consent agreement, whether it be a supplement to the agreement or not, which I think is actually kind of heartening for the community. That means there's like a real incentive for people to contact the court, they can either write or they can show up. Everyone talks about the power of the FOP of the police union. How often were they mentioned today in the court? How important were they to this process? Well, they were mentioned constantly because constantly the judge was asking, you know, can you do X, Y, and Z? Very specifically having civilian participation on internal trial boards, which are internal disciplinary boards. And he was, the judge was saying, well, can you really, you've committed to this in this consent decree. And in fact, in the consent decree, the city says, yes, there will be civilians on on police review boards. There absolutely will be there. But the judge was saying, well, I don't know, can you do that? And the FOP, uh, you know, has, because of the state law, which says yes, also has to be collectively bargained. The FOP has to say yes, it's okay. And he was saying, can you make the FOP do this, basically? Right. And the city was like, well, we're going to do our best. <laughs> but there was no absolute, you know, indication that they could get that done. Right. I mean, the mayor did commit to having civilian oversight Absolutely. on the internal disciplinary board, they both right? Committed to, they committed to it in the consent decree, and the judge was, was skeptical. I, I wouldn't say he was skeptical, but he was questioning them pretty pretty strongly about whether or not they would do that. Now, Gene Ryan, who's the president of FOP, actually appeared outside the courtroom, and uh, you know our photographer Cameron uh, talked to him, so let's hear what he had to say. Do you feel that with this change of administration in D.C. that you may get some support that you didn't have before? Um, I don't know. I, I don't really want to comment on that because, it, you know, things are new. I mean, it's it's just like the judge said, uh, you know, there's there's different players. So the, the sand's shifting, as he put it. So I, I just have to I'll wait and see, just like everybody else. Just like I recommend, I don't like rushing through anything. Sometimes you got to take a couple steps back and take a deep breath. I'm certainly not going to rush through it either. So what do you so. think? I mean, 
Do you think it's been a rush job to get it done in the Absolutely. final days? I, I think, it, and, and some of the politicians that went on record to sign saying they wanted to get it done before our next president got sworn in. So I definitely think it was rushed. Are you worried about how this will affect the rank and file members of your department? Yes, absolutely. And what what concerns you about it? Well, like I just said, and you missed it, we're not afraid of reform. We put out the blueprints you very well know four or five years ago. So we know there needs to be some changes. We're, we're okay with that. We're, we worked with um, DOJ. We didn't have a seat at the table at the very end, and I wish we did. But. Um, but we still gave them important information, and they did use some of it. So it's going to be beneficial, some of the policies we disagree with, though. So, Stephen, what do you think the timeline is going forward? What's going to happen next? Well, right now, the judge, once he reviews these, uh, you know, but it's about a four or six, five to six-page document about all the things he wants to review. Once he finishes them, he should be in the position to sign this consent decree and make it part of a court order that would then be would then join the Justice Department and the city. I think what's interesting is if Jeff Sessions is confirmed, will the Justice Department file a quick motion to seek a different another hearing? I think the people you saw in courtroom today were all leftovers from the Obama administration. I don't think you had new lawyers in place in the Civil Rights Division. And so I think right now we are in very tenuous, tenuous times in terms of whether or not the consent decree will be used or go forward exactly as people think it will. I think it's really up in, up in the air, more than people think. Right. And I think the judge really signified that when he said there are political wins that can yes. really affect what's going on here. Yep. Okay. This is Terry Graham and Stephen Janis reporting for The Real News Network in Baltimore City, Maryland.